So I talked about in the previous video how I wanted to make some exclusive content for the Patreon, and one of my ideas was brainstorming sessions. They're obviously something that I post on the channel here anyway, but I'm often finding myself brainstorming about Bionicle, about Lego. I think about Lego more than healthy adult probably should. But today was special. You see, this is the first time that I have touched a particular build of mine in probably the last six months, other than to maybe move it around, the Boomstick. And it's one of my favorite builds because it's fairly straightforward in concept. It is a triple action stud shooter. And the way that it works is simple. Turning a gear on the back here will fire off one round from each of the three stud shooters at the same time. A full revolution of that will empty out all three of these. So you'll shoot off 18 rounds pretty quick. Here's the thing. It's kind of modular. Hopefully you know where I'm going with this. So I have seen creators out there make design weapons for Lego. And when I say weapons, I don't mean like, you know, brick built guns and things like that's a whole separate genre in general. But I'm talking about like, well, let me show you one. You see, there's a fantastic YouTuber over here by the name of JK Brickworks. Go ahead and check them out, by the way. Highly recommend them. But this little video right here just showcases in hand one of the really excellent, honestly, it's it's lovely. <laughs> Long story short, I'm going to go ahead and just spin this forward so you can kind of see what's going on here. This isn't a react video, and I don't want to sit there and take the content. But you get the idea of what's going on, right? So what if we could design something like that, but... For stud shooters, for 2015 stud shooters, now I get it, they're very tedious to load, I would agree with that. This is something that you'd play with one time, it's like playing with the deck of cards until you drop it, and then you don't want to play with the deck of cards anymore. It's tedious, you don't want to do that part. <laughs> and the same is true for these, you load these once, you shoot it once, and you give it to somebody else, it's a gift. <laughs> so generally speaking though, here's a thought. And I don't think it necessarily even has to be a, a blaster, like in the hand. That would be fun, and I'd love to do that too. But also, I saw something else I wanted to showcase. This build right here. This is a display of, an example of planetary gear systems in LEGO. Planetary gears have a lot of really interesting uses. I don't utilize them probably nearly as much as I should. But you can see what's going on here too, right? It's using a bunch of 12 tooth gears. And what is that? A 36 tooth gear? Something along those lines as well. And so the idea is, well, if I could spin that central gear, that I could rotate those external gears. And maybe I could pair those into blasters in and of themselves, or I could pair the blasters into the planetary ring and just keep extending them as best I can. Now, this is just one example of it. I don't know if these are the gears I would work with. I don't know if this is the size that I would work with. But I thought of a really interesting weapon that I've never seen done before. What if you had a character whose mode of fighting, whose projectile weapon was a halo around them or a belt, a ring, something, a necklace for all, you know, intents and purposes, where at the very front of the necklace, there's a stud shooter and you spin it and it shoots the stud shooter, all six shots, and then it rotates it to the next one and then it shoots those six and then it rotates it. That's such an interesting idea. It's either that or you could have the stud shooters shoot in all directions, which I think has its own implications. Like, that's a really fascinating idea. It's a simple, silly premise, and I don't even know how practical it necessarily is. But damn, do I want to do it? Of course. <laughs> And I think that's part of the fun when it comes to building with Lego, when it comes to building Bionicle or Technic or whatever, is sometimes you just get an idea. You don't have a person in mind. You don't have a specific character that you want to build in mind. But sometimes you just want to build an arm or a leg or a weapon in this case. And that could be worth it. Sometimes that even steamrolls into another build, as is often the case with me. I start with one thing. And then I'm like, oh, I just built three things out of one idea because I'm in this mode, this building session that's just full of inspiration. And I don't try to take inspiration from everybody else out there. I let the parts speak to me. I've often talked about messing with a Lego, messing with Bionicle, Technic, etc. as a design language, right? And I really want to accentuate the word language, put emphasis on that because that's what it is to me. I treat Lego when I build with it like I am learning 
every day, but also like I am wielding a language that I'm more fluent in the more experience I have. But it's not just about fluency. It's also about the fact that whatever I build is built through my understanding of that language. It's my voice. It's uniquely mine. Other people can take inspiration from it. I want them to. I do this not only for my own passion, but because I want to inspire. But that's the point is that we take through osmosis the things that we see around us that inspire us and we turn them into our own thing, our own interpretation. And hopefully we can extend that same freedom to other creators out there when we see something they create may not necessarily like it. It may not fit our idea of maybe their take on a specific character. But I think that's part of the beauty of it. And oftentimes I think it's very interesting and it sparks the coolest conversations when People bring up, hey, this isn't how I see this character, but here's a direction you could take it. I love that because I've built, what, three or four different takes on like, I don't know, the Toa Mata revamps and Toa Nuva and Borak revamps and Rahi and the Toa Mystica and Fantoka that I've been doing recently on the channel, G2 stuff. And there's something really special about it because I think there's no limits you know, again, just like with a language, you can never write every book. You can never say everything that can be said or like music. No one will ever write every song. There's always more to be said. And that's also true with building, too. It's the beauty of building in my eyes. There's something just special about setting aside some time and doing with that time what you love. You might not be where you want to be today. I'm not, but I am enjoying the process. I'm enjoying the journey, and that's what I'm in it for. I don't see a destination. I don't believe that there's anywhere where I finish the job. I just believe I'm on this journey, and I'm enjoying all the sights that I get to see. So anyway, that's it. <laughs> that is the idea in a nutshell. Learn, inspire, and don't be afraid to see things from a new lens every once in a while. That said, I can't wait to make a blaster belt. <laughs> what am I going to call it? The boom belt? I don't know. I mean, that's a neat name. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed the video, do be sure to subscribe. It helps the channel out greatly. And I also want to go ahead and mention, too, that the uh, Water Shaman has actually sold. So thank you all so much for checking in on that. I'll follow that up in the future with a little bit of details because uh, I'm expecting some interesting things to come from that. Also worth noting, too, that um, if things work out correctly, if, the, if, it, if nothing gets in the way, that tomorrow I should actually have an interview with the uh, lead creator, designer behind the Modeval Toys product line. Or I don't know what to call it yet. Like, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> um, as far as I'm aware, although I want to continue talking to them about this idea, they want to reveal some exclusive information um, which will be cool. That would be something new on the channel. Uh, and it's also only the second interview I've done on the channel. I did one with uh, Pokoro Morgan all the way back in, I want to say December. And that was lovely. I absolutely, oh, that was fantastic to do. Um, so hopefully I get to have them again as a guest on the channel here as well. And lastly, um, yeah, you can check out links for Discord if I didn't mention that already. Patreon if you want to check out more brainstorming sessions like this video here. And of course, you can also check out the Instagram. All of that is linked in the description below. Let me know your thoughts and what is the most obscure, interesting weapon design that you've seen from a creator? Because I want to know. There's some really fascinating stuff out there. I will see you all in the next one. Take care.